Hello and welcome. This is NTA Nationwide. I am Juma Yes. We shall be going to other zones to bring you happenings across the country. Submissions at the ongoing 6th International Culture Summit in Edinburgh, Scotland have identified skills, arts and creativity as a motivator for sound education and human capacity building. Anthony Fawson reports. The summit, which is the world's leading gathering of culture ministers with artists and practitioners, made submissions that were dedicated to exploration of culture and education. Fela Omoyele Balugun, a movement artist, educator and choreographer, spoke on the place of using the body and fusing it into education. The concept of the Western mentality, we have the idea that culture, so like dancing, music, and storytelling, spirituality, and tradition are all separated. And so for me, and for what I represent, it was very important to remember that it's all about the connection of the, these five elements um, that make culture and not the opposite way. Vinola Mabel. Art explain how music can be a powerful tool in the quest for knowledge. It's more about us as Africans, young Africans in particular, to embrace our heritage and our culture in order to be able to be global citizens. I mean, we've got South Africa that has 11 official languages and its own cultures within one country. We've got Nigeria that has like over 500 languages, you know. So we need to understand one another in order to be able to appreciate one another and understand where we come from so that we get rid of issues such as xenophobia, racism, and Afro. Andres Shilha enumerated how skills are very important in any learning process. And that's the crux of education today. We have made young people passive consumers of prefabricated content. But we don't give them that agency, the capacity to do things, to mobilize their cognitive, social, emotional resources, to build that agency and that co-agency. You know, we never live in isolation. We always do things in interaction. In this era of ICT and artificial intelligence, Deirdre Quanstrom, Vice President, Education Microsoft, spoke of its importance in this age and time. We've seen just amazing uh, engagement from, from students. When they're able to use a video game in school, they're suddenly more interested. They're spending more time in their schoolwork. It's different from the typical way that they're assigned, assigned work in school. And so there's more curiosity, and they often go deeper in the learning. Linking all their presentations on creativity, Information and Culture Minister Lyle Mohamed says Nigeria is on the right path by growing the creative industry since the present administration came into power. Because be it technology or science, they are only tools. Content is king. And that is one area we should put a lot of emphasis on. And that makes me, uh, you know, uh, quite uh, glad to see that going back, we have been doing the right thing in Nigeria. It is in realization of this that government, he said, has approved more funds to continue to support the sector. It's now an economy on its own, bigger than most other economies. The federal government approved a loan of 170 million US dollars, which is part of 18 million dollars from AFDB. The 170 million dollars is returned from AFDB, which will be used to fill the multi industry. A fully integrated youth program was also included in the summit as a way of listening to extraordinary young artists and cultural leaders sharing their vision for the future and inspiring cross-generational culture exchange. In Edinburgh, Scotland, Anthony Forson, NTA News. The 34th session of the Nigeria Cameroon Mixed Commission on Permanent Resolution of the Boundary Dispute has ended in Abuja, with key decisions taken towards resolving other areas of dispute by the two countries. The Mixed Commission says it will continue to work closely with the United Nations, EU, International Court of Justice, demarcation and technical team to identify and recommend implementation of the trans-border infrastructure projects 
to enhance economic cooperation and integration of the two countries. The Mixed Commission notes that the continued support of the European Union for sustainable development, livelihood and social cohesion of border communities and efforts to maintain peace by the United Kingdom, Canada and the government of Nigeria and Cameroon. It has also taken note of the revised budget for the demarcation exercise and remaining activities by the technical team. Additional 327 pillars in the Atlantica Mountains, the communique says, have been constructed while security around the border has been reinforced. Preparations for the construction of pillars in Lot 7 by the project and technical steering committees has also been duly taken into consideration by the mixed commission. Its 35th session will be held in Yaoundé at a date to be announced. Let's bring you up to speed with news making the rounds. Head of Civil Service of the Federation for Lashi Day Yemi Essen has inaugurated an anti-corruption and transparency unit in the office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. Haman Jabani reports that this is for transparency and accountability in the implementation of government policies. The fight against corruption remains a priority of the present administration, hence the need to strengthen anti-corruption reforms in the various ministries, extra-ministerial departments and agencies. It is in the light of this that the head of the civil service of the Federation, Falasha de Yemi Esso, who was represented by the Permanent Secretary, Common Service Office, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Yusuf Ibrahim Idris says, there is need for underwaving commitment and diligent pursuit of policies that seeks to promote transparency, accountability, while discouraging and sanctioning all forms of corruption tendencies among civil servants. This important event comes at a solid time when government and your service in its efforts to reduce waste and promote openness has. As far as reform initiatives commence the systematic implementation of preventive measures through development of stand standard operating procedures. However, for actors to ma maximize their potentials, this office should step up in assisting the ICP in enforcing MDS compliance and actual establishment and operations, which in the long run will help to improve the image of the public service and overall fight against corruption in the police. In another development for the sustenance of implementation and consolidation of the gains of the Federal Civil Service Strategic and Implementation Plan 2021-2025, the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation has trained director-level cadres officers on productivity management, leadership, and managerial skills and personal effectiveness. The training is aimed at reawakening consciousness of the participants towards understanding the meaning of leadership and its practicability in the workplace. Ahmed Jabani, NTA News. The Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund says it has built strong walls against negative trials that retarded its employee compensation mandate. In a statement, the managing director of NSITF, Dr. Michael Akabugu, says the redress process for claims and compensation now takes 10 to 14 days and to be further reduced after introduction of duty-free call center in the next few months. NSITF strategic reforms unveiled a year ago has not only front-loaded trans transparency and accountability in the operations of the fund but has also broken new grounds like the automation of operational process of the fund which enabled workers and their dependents to redeem a total of 23,615 claims and compensation worth over 1,170 paid in the last one year. Other benefits include medical expenses reform, refund to 603 employees, employers, loss of productivity to 174 employers, death benefits to 10,610 beneficiaries of deceased employees, as well as retirement benefits to 3,506 disabled employees, among others. Now, the federal government through the Ministry of Agriculture has introduced a new agricultural policy tagged National Agricultural Technology and Innovation Policy, NATIP. Consequently, the United States of America has pledged to support the initiative with $55 million. Details with Musa Aliou.
The policy is a six-year strategy to be implemented between 2022 and 2027 with a view to introducing innovation and technology in agricultural activities in the country. The policy is expected to further increase resilience in digital agriculture, thereby promoting potential value chains and agricultural investment. The documents also cover the cross-cutting areas of digital and climate smart agriculture, rural infrastructural development, nutrition and export standardization. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar, made public the policy documents. The implementation strategy of the policy has outlined clear responsibilities and roles among the national, state and local government actors with clear indicators and timelines for robust and collective tracking of progress throughout the period of implementing the policy. We'll provide direct food assistance in areas with high levels of acute food insecurity and to those experience greater vulnerability to price shocks. Second, we will target the agriculture sector by promoting better practices, supporting agribusinesses, reducing food loss, and supporting social protection and safety nets for smallholder farmers. Our present concern is to mobilize stakeholders towards deploying needed human and material resources through budgetary provisions and development interventions so as to steadily actualize the 10 thematic areas that the policy outlined. The vision of the federal government is to create a synergy with stakeholders and also align knowledge as well as transfer rapid mechanization, establishment of agricultural development fund, extension service delivery, revitalization, and livestock development. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. Talking health and other issues, ending COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy and meeting the target of vaccinations, 70, vaccinating 70% of Nigeria's eligible population before the end of 2022 is a climax of a roadwork organized by key players in Nigeria's vaccination program with the theme, Walk for Healthy Life. Olushi Agrebo tells us more. As the longest journey begins, with a single step, moves to get everyone embraced vaccines and vaccination seems to be yielding the desired results. This work, which took off from the head office of the MPHCDA, is an addition to all the sensitization and advocacy efforts garnered towards raising awareness on the importance of immunization and vaccines to child survival among the populace. Ulukemi Adeyanje chooses to come out for the work with her children, and their excitement is obviously pointers to how they have reaped the benefits of vaccines. Vaccine is very important. Vaccination for children, and not only for children, even for adults, is very important because that's the only way you can stay healthy throughout your lifetime. I advise Nigerian children to get vaccinated to avoid all these diseases like COVID-19. The road work is part of a series of activities. The National National Primary Health Care Development Agency, MPHCDA, and its partners fashioned out to commemorate the 2022 African Vaccination Week. So this is all about awareness creation and also to say what the federal government is doing about vaccination and vaccines. That we have vaccines, we want our people to come to get themselves vaccinated. To celebrate three years without wild polio and to keep polio at zero in Nigeria. These vaccines promoters took time to engage road users on the significance of reaching immunization for children and the COVID-19 vaccination in Abuja. The clamor to mainstream persons living with disability in policy formulation and implementation again resonates as women with disability converge in Abuja to seek for inclusiveness. The Federal Ministry of Women Affairs and Partners are championing this course with focus on the theme, violence against women with disability is violence against all women. Ngozi Technical completes the report. Estimated that 25 million Nigerians are living with one form of disability or the other, and about 30 million of these are women and girls. Such women and girls are not immune to physical and psychological violence, in addition to stigmatization and neglect. We are women with disabilities, we are not less 
women with every potential of women without disabilities or a situation whereby a physically challenged person will struggle to go through the university after all the stress a he or she will not get a job disability without means of livelihood i see it in society the society don't see us as human beings they don't see us as a person who can love and be loved with various forms of physical challenges they are at times excluded from policy framework on issues that affect them a narrative they want to change inclusiveness we are talking about if i patients is going to the health center if i am also going to assess justice are all these systems accessible calling on all stakeholders at all levels to ensure that whatever programs and activities we have in place addressing women particularly women and girls with disabilities are uh, captured the overall aim they say is to spotlight women with disability in positive light through increased awareness. In Abuja, Ngozi Technico, NT News. Nigeria Policy Hackathon is engaging students on national issues through debate. Organized in Abuja for active involvement of youths in politics and policy making to build a progressive Nigeria. Ekene Ndudue reports. The most troubling part of this inequality is gender inequality youth inequality. Nigeria is a country with diverse ethnic groups. They are no longer taking a back seat and they want their voices to be heard. Nigeria Policy Hackathon has provided the platform for students from various states across the country to debate on various issues of national interest. Youth participation in politics, gender sensitivity, foreign policy and climate change dominated discussions as the youths advocated greater inclusivity of young people in policy making we should be conscious of our leaders we should go out we should vote we should sensitize others we should be involved in politics we don't have to leave it for just the leaders we have to do something for ourselves so we have to do something for our society we have to do something for our community it starts with us. For the organizers, the debate is designed to educate and engage youths on issues around policy making. The hackathon is where you crowdsource ideas. So we wanted to use this approach, the hackathon approach, to crowdsource policy ideas from young people from across the country. And using that model to also impact on their knowledge on policies. Riding on the slogan, change begins with me, these students believe individual contributions will go a long way in achieving the Nigeria of their dreams. Ekene Ndulue, NTA News. Reports just reaching us from Jigawa indicate that a bridge near Bunnunkudu along the old Mikano Medugri Federal Highway has collapsed. This is as a result of heavy flooding with rivers in the corridor overflowing their banks. The situation has forced motorists plying to and from all the northeastern states to look for alternative routes to reach their destination. Meanwhile, officials of the Federal Ministry of Works have visited the collapsed bridge for immediate assessment for the next line of action. Abdullah bin Nukudu reports that this is the second bridge to collapse along the road due to the heavy and torrential rains being experienced this raining season. For more from across Nigeria, we're joining Hingino in Lagos. Hello, Hingino. Jumai and welcome to Lagos. For some days now, it has been a nightmare for motorists along Sele Ijesha Rainbow, a section of the Papa Oshodi Oroshoki Expressway, following an unyielding gridlock. Adeni Taiwo reports that motorists flying the route are counting down, eagerly awaiting the day that ongoing rehabilitation work on the highway will be completed for easy movement along that axis. Prior to 2018, when work began on three sections of the Apapa Oshodi Oroshoki Expressway, the corridor, constructed with flexible pavement, was a captive of incessant gridlock that sometimes stretched for kilometers from Tinkan Port to Osmai 2. Already completed with concrete pavement, sections 1, 3, and 4 now enjoy better traffic, leaving only section 2 that was awarded later in 2020. The move at the speed of snow 
an inch at a time. A whole lot of patience, their virtue. These are the two sides of First Rainbow, a bus stop along the 8.2 kilometer stretch that make up section 2 of Apapa Osho the Oboronshoki Expressway. On this side of the road, we have rehabilitation work ongoing. Right on the other side, we have motorists who are paying the price of development. Just from Ijesha, I've not been able to get to Sonia for the past three to four hours now. And I'm a transport, uh, I'm doing transport business. Look at the road. Somebody will leave his house for like how many hours and will be sleeping on the road. And you have business to do. If there's diversion, like two, three kilometers, then she went to the front and opened so that few will go, then few will stay. Hamed Mohammed has been in the country for five years and is now used to Lagos traffic. While applauding ongoing reconstruction work to put concrete pavement on the road, he called for a quicker pace. This is not new for me. Every day traffic. This is Lagos. You have to finish first. By the time they finish the construction of that road, I'm very, very sure college and every other doing business in Apapa will be um, an easy going thing. But averagely, we'll say we've done like three kilometers, which is around 30%. at 30% completion. Attention is on the main carriageway inbound Apapa with traffic diverted to the service lane for motorists heading towards the nation's ports. That measure will have been adequate to take care of the traffic, but for another road project overlapping at this junction. So while we are doing that, the Gossi government is also working on their own bridge there. But the Apapa Osho is a federal road project. So that is the major bottleneck there. For a corridor that connects the nation's ports to the mainland, it is expected that this kind of gridlock you know, will occur once in a while. But what is certain is that a long lasting relief is on the way as this ongoing construction is set to be completed soon. That and other operations to fill the port, we will expect that we you know will assist to free this corridor for easy flow of traffic. From second rainbow along Apapa Osho the Oworo Shoki Expressway, Adeni Taiwo, NTN News. The Nigerian Navy is gradually carving the name of the country among nations that are self-sufficient in complete shipbuilding with the training and certification of ratings in welding and fabrication, as well as carpentry and joinery. Correspondent reports that this is part of the Chief of the Naval Staff's effort in boosting technical training for maximum efficiency. The journey of indigenous shipbuilding by the Nigerian Navy, which began over 10 years ago, has been progressing steadily. The reactivation of the basic apprenticeship school is a great feat in ship making from scratch to finish, including aesthetics. These ratings have added more skills in welding, fabrication, carpentry and joinery to their combatant prowess. This, the Chief of Naval Engineering, Rear Admiral Suleiman Dauda El Ladan, represented, said, will boost demand for indigenous shipbuilding. The Navy is certainly called for a new era in technical training from what I have seen today. So the Nigerian Navy has invested in your training with a view to sustaining operational availability and efficiency. This underscores the important role you will play in the field after graduation and how you are to apply the knowledge and skill in the field. The Chief of Naval Engineering further assured that the Nigerian Navy will continue to work towards safeguarding the nation's maritime domain through technical trainings like this. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Nationwide continues in Benin with Ogo Chukwuka after this timeout. An electronic media content exhibition and awards, NEMSIA 2022 is born. It is the biggest gathering of TV, radio, online, film and all forms of electronic media content in one place to celebrate and do the business of content for three days in August 29, 30 and 31, 2022 at Radisson Blue Hotel, Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Register now to attend at www.nemsia.net. NEMSIA is brought to you by MCORN in collaboration with BMA, collocating with NIFS, proudly supported by media support by
Namsia 2022. Room place. Three days. Content is king. Always. Nigeria Golf Federation announces its first Nigeria Golf Federation Summit. This summit will discuss salient topical issues that relate to the development and upliftment of golf in Nigeria. Chairman General IBM Haruna, Special Guest of Honor, Honorable Minister of Sports, Mr. Sunday Dare, Convener, Otumba Orusha Gunushewe, OON, President Nigeria Golf Federation, date 31st August to 2nd September 2022, venue Ladikwali Hall, Sheraton Hotel and Towers, Abuja, time 10 a.m. prompt. This event is supported by Polaris Bank, Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa Independent Television, AIT, Golf Garden, Anchor Insurance and Royal Sarah. Otumba Orushagunushewe, OON, President, Nigeria Golf Federation, announcer. Harmony of biodiversity destroyed, both in climate crisis and crime phases. Dicey situation indeed, yet we carry on like a bull in a china shop. On environment matters, we take the bull by the horns, comb the nooks and cranny of Nigeria. Asking tough questions. Examining challenges and opportunities. Giving human face to the science, facts, facts and global agreements. It's a call for action. Don't miss it. Join award-winning environmental journalist Jennifer Igwe and other NTA eco-reporters for Environment Matters. The Delta State Government will continue to invest in the agricultural sector as part of its contribution to strengthen the country's economy and generate employment for the Temi youths. These were the words of Governor Ifan Yokoa during a tour of the 3,000 hectares of oil palm plantation in Akukwibo near Asaba. Tessie Koka has details. Even as much as agriculture has remained the mainstay of the country's economy, stakeholders have identified palm oil as a sure way to curb food insecurity in the country. With this, therefore, Governor Kua has continued to support the dream to take use of the street. Hence, the government partnership with Northworthy Farm Akukuigo. A drive around the palm oil farm by the governor and his team saw the readiness of the partnership. Beyond the fact that it will help to grow the economy of this, uh, of this environment and also help the, um, uh, the Indian communities that are around here, we are very mindful of the fact that uh, it's going to generate a lot of employment by our people. While we're touring around, I did ask about how many people are engaged in this space. And I'm told that on the average, we already have about 300 persons working on a daily place in this place. If the progress of the oil mill is anything to go by, then more youth in the state will be gainfully employed. In Akukuigo, Tessie, Koka, and TN News. And now motorists and other road users flying the Puma Aziz of the Benin Auchi Expressway will soon be relieved of the stress they currently face. This is because governments at the federal and state levels are working to mobilize contractors to return to sites as soon as possible. This is even as the youths have continued to occupy the road, saying they won't leave until construction is carried out there. The protest by the youths of Epoma over the deplorable condition of the Epoma as this of the Benin Aoche Expressway has entered its sixth day. This time, more youths from adjoining communities and the drivers of heavy-duty vehicles joined the protest in solidarity. This they did by barricading the road with their trucks. This has resulted in the increase in the number of stranded travelers. Fighting for their own uh, rights. The punishment is too much. Now, almost one week to go in there, more than that. I got it for I did this in five days. I don't see where I will pass. This is five days now. There's no road to pass everywhere I block. In the meantime, a team of engineers from the Federal Ministry of Works and the State Ministry of Works have carried out an on-the-spot assessment of the road. If the contractor do not start work today, 
by tomorrow morning is going to start work. We packet the road, we say accept. To exercise a bit more patience. For now, we can't do beyond the panetis which we have agreed. They say they will not shift grounds until words are matched with action. Nobody is leaving the protest ground until we see equipment. They are taking it in a very subtle manner. We don't want problem. When we resume, our mothers will do the market and come here. When the wheelchairs will come here. The sick will come here. Security personnel were on ground to monitor and ensure that there was no breakdown of law and order. The news continues in Abuja. Juma is still there. Thank you, Ogotukuka. The Nigerian army has officially handed over two dismissed soldiers to Yobe State Police Command for criminal prosecution over the alleged murder of a renowned Yobe cleric, Goni Aisami. Yunusa Suleiman reports. The handing over of the two suspects to the Yobe State Police Command is in fulfillment of an earlier pledge by the Nigerian army after it had found the suspects guilty and handed them reduction of ranks from lance corporals to privates and dismissed regiments. What you just witnessed here this morning is the official handover of the dismissed regiments to the Nigerian Police Yobe State Command for them to face civil persecution in the court of law. The police say John Gabriel and his co-partner Adam Gideon, alleged to have murdered Sheikh Gonai Sami, will be charged to court for armed robbery and culpable homicide upon completion of investigation. Observers are of the view that this development further demonstrated a workable interagency synergy among security agencies in their zero tolerance policy against crime and criminality in the state and the country at large. In the matter, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. The Nigerian Navy ship NNS Soro has reiterated its commitment to displaying professionalism in the discharge of its duty to stamp out criminal elements threatening national security and the safety of lives and property. This is coming on the heels of the alleged invasion of Letugbene community in Bios State. Ebinebi Zitimiola reports. With his mandate to protect critical national assets, lives and property, the Nigerian Navy ship NNS Soro has pledged to continue to confine themselves within the rules of engagement. This assurance was given following his recent operation in Letugbene community in a Karama local government area of Bayosu State, where a suspected militant leader alleged to be stockpiling arms and ammunition is taking shelter. It was further alleged that a suspect is in the business of kidnapping through collaboration with his cohorts and take their kidnapped victims from Boni River State to Letugbene. A chief from the community expressed worry over the activities of the said militant leader and therefore called on the government to come to their aid as the people now live in fear. The Tugbele community is a peaceful community. But uh, last year sometime some militant group come to this community and invade this community so that so many people that are from this community cannot come in. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Navy ship NNS Soro has arrested two suspected accomplices while the militant leader is still on the run. The Navy said it will not relent until the militant leader and other members of his gang are apprehended while assuring law-abiding indigenous of Little Bene to go about their lawful activities. Ebinimi Zitimiola NTN News. Still on security matters, the vandalization of critical national assets is impacting negatively on the nation's economy. To stem this unpatriotic act, a summit on anti vandalism between security agencies and civil society organizations is holding in Abuja. Chidima Ndubisi tells us more. That man who was open, so the tire of my car ran into it. I had a crack on the rim. The tire was swollen. So I had to change it. Alaya me there, narrating his experience with vandalized manholes. It's not just manhole that is targeted by vandals. Telecommunications operators report fiber cuts, inverter batteries, generators and diesel theft.
contributed to unfriendly network connectivity occurring most times. The power sector is not left out in this onslaught, let alone the oil and gas industry, losing about 200,000 barrels of crude oil daily. All these have financial, health and environmental implications that scare investors away. So, here, a meeting of think tank of some sort, forming a pool of ideas to come up with a lasting solution to vandalism. Citizens will therefore contribute their quota to improve the security of energy infrastructure by reporting suspicious activities around such infrastructure to security operatives. Members of respective communities must guard against the destruction of telecoms infrastructure and also discouraging the vice by naming and shaming those caught in the act. We are training and retraining to make sure that uh, there is peace during the elections. We are also suggesting to government on the need to establish a, a national infrastructure trust fund so that you can help government to raise funding support from the acute support from the companies to protect and maintain this infrastructure. Engaging youths with meaningful ventures, especially in the ICT sector, that presents huge job opportunities and prompt response of security agencies to reports of vandalism are possible solutions suggested at this summit. In Abuja, Kim Demant Ndubisi, NTA News. Time now to join Jenny in Port Harcourt for more on Nationwide. Hello, Jenny. My good evening and welcome. The Nigerian Customs Service Area 1 Command, Port Harcourt, says it has recorded an increase in revenue collection to the tune of 5 billion naira between January to June 2022, compared to the first quarter of 2021. Custom Area Controller Ibrahim Mohammed disclosed this at a press briefing in Port Harcourt, Robinson Jaratide reports. The Nigeria Customs Service Area 1 Command covers the Port Harcourt Seaport, Port Harcourt International Airport, excise factories and private jetties in River State, through activities in revenue collection, trade facilitation and anti-smuggling between January to June 2022. The command generated over 44 billion naira, an increase of over 15 percent compared to revenue collected in the first half of 2021. It is also very pertinent to note that the feat was achieved through the command's uncompromising stance in the areas of duty collections, blockage of all revenue leakages through cargo examinations and sensitization programs organized to enlighten stakeholders and the need to be compliant in all their clearance procedures. Following the approval for the collection of excise duties on all non-alcoholic, carbonated and sweetened beverages, the command in the month of June generated over 18 million naira and 173 million naira from some international breweries and bottling companies. The command also made a seizure of a container of fairly used clothes, which was falsely declared, hedging importers and their agents to desist from acts that pose threats to the economy of the country. In Port Harcourt, Robinson Delateide, NTA News. It is no longer news that tuberculosis diagnosis and treatment is free in most government facilities across the country. Of most concern now, according to tuberculosis managers in Aquaibo State, is the urgent need to create adequate demand for the available free services targeted at actualizing the end of TB by 2035. Informa Ihoje reports. In the face of the rapidly changing landscape in the management of TB, the Global Fund Public-Private Mix PPM project in Aquabom State, managed by KNCV, is engaging the hub and spoke model where patent medicine vendors, standalone pharmacies, community pharmacies, and even traditional birth attendants are involved in the management processes. The first thing is to create demand for the available services, and then to also advocate for more resources to be put into TB control. TB services are available. Diagnosis and treatment in the state is available. And it is actually free. Most importantly, the media space 
have been inundated with much information. Increasing undiagnosed pediatric tuberculosis, religious belief interference, and ignorance have been identified as factors militating against the strategy to end TB. They might not be coping with normal children coping. One thing is for sure that if a child is not doing uh, too well, if it is not putting on weight, take that child to the hospital. It is no longer news that TB treatment is free in a quibum and care could be assessed in all government facilities across the state in uyo ifoma ihoji ntn news and that's the news from here nationwide will continue in just after the break what are we doing as a nation to first of all settle our teaming populace especially the nta's new. political package with a third eye on the nation's political scene i am fisal You have to be very careful giving space to people who have obviously sponsored to, to further the agenda of some other groups. A lot back. of questions. A lot of questions in a closed door sessions. Some of these issues, some of the problems bedeviling the of their In fact, between June 1st and July 17, 19 point something billion has left the coffers of the NDC. I can say my constituency, they need everything because we don't have anything. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window. Wow. I'm fascinated with the discourse on national monuments and assets and how much is being done to preserve and stand the language issue. We have turned English to become like a pride van in our own cultural van. It's not a transfer. It's not a COVID-19. Innovation 1897 was a deliberate Deliberate tactics. You know, many of these people come into the open areas now. These and um, applications, um, there are terms and conditions. Of course, it is the union of uh, two people, a man and a woman coming together. My name is Nambi Otiko. And I'm Elizabeth Omori. Thanks for joining us. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has unveiled new strategic communication digital push that has the capacity for video and audio communication that can be used for monitoring and accessing disaster in its operation fields. Director General of the agency, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, said the agency can now communicate effectively with frontline respondent and command centers. Ilyas Yakubu reports. According to the technical expert, the new communication gadget is a Hytera emergency solution to ensure secure wireless link to enable frontline responders to communicate with command centers. It can also function flexibly as walkie-talkies, Android smartphones, and local theaters of operation across unlimited distance in terms of range. The Director General of the agency said the command center can communicate with officers on the field for assessment on disasters. He said the gadget can also facilitate rapid deployment during emergencies. The live radio video streams has the ability to send and receive text messages as well as install GPS for fast tracking and retrieval of messages in the event of loss. We have normal radio usage 
and then we have smart phone usage for this thing. So that means you can communicate by text messages, uh, you can communicate by audio calls, you can also communicate by pictorial sending pictures, you can also communicate by video live stream of what is happening in the fields. While congratulating staff of the agency, the DG NEMA enjoined them to take full advantage of the new gadget for optimum performance. In Abuja, Ilias Yaku, NTA News. The effect of climate change has continued to ravage countries around the world and Nigeria is not left out as despite early warnings by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency about impending flood in Kanu, the state is experiencing losses but the state emergency management says it is still counting. Amin Umar reports that about 300 houses have been destroyed in the recent rainstorms. The mixed feelings in the farm, it is glad tidings there is high hope of achieving bumper harvest in some communities it is however not that pleasant at home their houses have been destroyed some lives been lost the little aliyu narrowly escaped after being trapped under a collapsed building while four others lost their lives in a village in ajingi local government Atiyumaka, Atiyumaka. i never expect the boy to survive the incident this happened after a heavy rainfall that lasted for 48 hours. It affected about 13 local governments and the state emergency management is still counting. This is despite the prediction that the Nigeria Meteorological Agency presented to the stakeholders as preemptive steps towards reducing the level of devastation. The Nigeria Emergency Management Agency headquarters wrote a letter to each and every state governors who are calling their attention <coughs> What NIMED and NISA produce. And so what we normally do is to highlight the general public who are close to dams or rivers or big ponds where water overflowed. So the moment they saw a sign of flooding in that area, they should vacate their houses. If they don't have where to relocate, we have an IDP camp. As the rain continues to wreak havoc, Authorities in Hadeji Jamaari also issued an early warning about the possibility of flood along the river line. Observers attribute the incessant flood disaster to poor drainage system. We want the government to come to our rescue to do the needful to remove all the blockades that resulted to this uh, devastating event. Emergency responders are working towards analyzing the losses in addition to providing emergency relief materials to some victims. In Kano, Amin Umar, NTA News. And Eboi is one of the states where floods ravages farmlands and in most cases sack communities. This year's experience has been a bad one for the people of Abakeleke, Eboi, Afikbo North, Ikuadu, Iku and Ivo council areas since this has become a yearly occurrence. Chila John takes a look at interventions of the state government geared towards mitigating the menace so as to bring relief to victims. The occurrence, depending on the intensity of rain, leaves its tale of woes on the lips of victims. To change the narrative, the state government in 2013 attracted and launched the World Bank Assisted Project, Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management Project, New Map, leading to the construction of about 13.3 kilometers drainage system. Although the project has aided in reducing flood in parts of the state, the six council areas of Abakliki, Ebony, Afi Unot and South, Iko and Ivo this year experienced it in an alarming proportion, as about 49,188 persons are already affected by flood, with one death recorded. We only experienced what we had this year in 2012, when federal government came for intervention. Uh, we have about five local governments desirely affected by this year's flood. The victims, including pupils of Ola Boke Community Primary School in Abakaliki Council area, prevented yearly from assessing their school due to flood, decried the fact that the yearly nightmare is yet to be attended to. My book is in the school, but because of this work, I couldn't even know how I will use and go and break my book. I need my book. Our school is behind this flooding area. Because of the flooding, we have not been attending our classes. In Abakaliki, Chinazajon, 
NTA News. Now, despite a series of warnings on prospective flooding in the country, considering the effect of climate change on the environment, the occurrence has not been without its unique challenges and attendant effect on man and the environment in Akwa Ibom State. Correspondent Jared James in this report takes a look at flooding in the state and measures taken by government to contain this natural disaster. Condition of Nigeria Meteorological Agency NIMET on heavy rainfall patterns in most parts of the country, including Akwaibum State, is no more news. Rather, many are concerned about interventions. With the table land nature of Akwaibum terrain, coupled with the attitude of some people, some areas of the state are prone to flooding. When it rain, all this area full with water if our house enter the water enter all the money we will spend is for event the flood came in and did this devastation it enters my house to window level so i packed out it killed my uh, beds in spite of seeming challenges, the federal government has always shown concern over disasters arising from floods by providing ecological funds to state for intervention. Before now, the, this, this place was a serious washer. The road was cut into two, up to almost the middle part of the road. That hindered the transportation. This place is a, a typical rural, rural environment. The agency was directed to intimate citizens to be aware of the impending flood. The agency has carried out sensitization. It's FEMA that came to help us, and they did a lot of jobs here. Now we are, in, we are doing a lot of business now. Uh -huh, because the road is good. It is the thought of concerned citizens that more precautionary measures should be taken to curb attitudes and societal norms that are inimical to healthy environment in Uyo Charity Gems NTA News. Sports update is next.